200 to 800 period, and right in the time of the formation of Islam in these areas. So if you want to say, uh, what's the equivalent of a, of a, of a mufti in Judaism is a rabbi. Because what's a rabbi? He, he's really a legal specialist. He's not the head of a community. He only gets to be the head of a community when some community pays him to come and be the head. Otherwise, he's just a rabbi who's been studying the uh, holy law and the holy books. He's a legal specialist, a private legal specialist until he gets a job someplace. And I would say, uh, wouldn't you, uh, maybe uh, two-thirds of rabbis are unemployed. <laughs> they about a third are able to get a, what's called a pulpit these days. Pulpit is some group going to pen. Most of them are, you know, stockbrokers or something. <laughs> street sweepers. Uh, you know, I mean, yeah, scratch a street sweeper, you find a rabbi. Uh, uh, so, I mean, the same in Islam. But you see, it has to be a religion that's based on a holy law, on the law as being the center of the religion. Christianity is not based like that. Therefore, Christianity is not really a Middle Eastern religion. It's a Greek religion. People don't realize that. They see it as a Middle Eastern religion because of the Jesus is placed in a Middle East setting. But the Jesus figure is really a kind of a Dionysus man-god figure, as I've tried to tell you, that Greek God story writers have put in a Palestinian intellectual milieu. He said, oh, he really existed. No, I don't really think he did, honestly. Not the way he's presented. It may have been a character that's based on, but not, not that portrait. What they've done is take a Hellenized person, stuck him in a Middle East milieu, very cleverly done. And as you see, it's lasted 2,000 years and influenced most of mankind. So it's extremely artful and absolutely, the fact that few people have been able to penetrate it, that's not surprising and that the believers love it, that's not surprising either. You're supposed to. In Greek culture, the, the believers loved Apollo and uh, Dionysus for a thousand, two thousand years. So that, that, that. in Greek culture, they loved Osiris. And Greek, uh, Jesus is a man-god that walks around uh, dispensing wisdom. But you see, the wisdom dispensed is not a Middle Eastern sort of religion. It's a, it's a, it's a salvation by faith which is another sort of uh, nexus put in a Palestinian mute. Now, Islam is a Middle Eastern religion because it's based on law. It's based on law and how you should practice it. Christianity has gone the way of Paul. Paul is the in character in his letters who's constantly arguing against the law in favor of faith. Now, at the time of Paul, I don't think there was a Jesus uh, created in terms of the way we know him because Paul doesn't know anything about him. See, if there was a Jesus created in the way we know him, he would be in Paul's letters. He would say, hey, you remember when Jesus was with the uh, woman with the, with the 20 year flow of blood and uh, then he, uh, he touched her and her bleeding stopped? Or you remember when Jesus was uh, with the crazies at the Gadara and he took the uh, spirits and uh, they went into the herd of swine and ran off the mountaintop? Or you remember when he, Jesus, was at the wedding in Cana and, uh, and he made, he turned the water into wine? You know, everything that we love about Jesus, the miracle worker, Paul doesn't know a thing about. And he's living right then. So the stories haven't been created yet in Paul's time. It's very simply, and that's, that's the conclusion. Or you say, well, or I think he's an ignoramus. But I don't think he's an ignoramus. Uh, so all of that which we love is later artistic uh, placing Jesus in a Palestinian view, but basically a Dionysus, Nisus, Osiris, wonder worker. Uh, but Muhammad was not that. He's an historical figure. And Islam um, uh, develops the way Judaism developed in the Middle East according to law. And it's a, it's a, it's a religion of law as the background. So the, uh, so the, uh, the uh, conservators or perpetrators are legal specialists. Mm -hmm. So it totally is Judaism. Islam is Judaism, but Judaism cosmopolitanized, and Judaism, that's forgotten itself. Because if you ask a Muslim, are you a Jew? Is oh, I'm not a Jew. No, no, the Jews, the Jews, you know, and they start uh, spouting invective. And uh, he, he's not even aware himself that Islam is just Judaism cosmopolitanized. It's the same uh, structure, the same, it's put together in the same way, it's uh, basically using the same heroes, it's just a more cosmopolitan version 
of the same thing. And it's organized in the same way. But much more, uh, since it's a newer thing, it's much more modern in the way it's put together. Much, it's not, didn't take 2,000 years to unfold or 1,000 years to unfold. And it, it, it was created in the space of a generation or two or three of a century or two, maybe two centuries. So if that's for, it's much more uh, clear in the way it's constructed. And so this, for instance, is very clear how the legal, if you ask a Jewish legal people, they won't know how it's constructed. It will be all a big hodgepodge. Whereas this is totally clear. They've got it all rationalized very, very carefully. Okay. So the Quran is the basic root of what there is. But there's not enough legal material in the Quran to make a full legal structure about all of life and a whole religion. So the next thing comes the Hadith, and that's the interesting subject in Islamic Arabic history. What are the Hadith? Now this is a little uh, bit like uh, Christianity, in that the Hadith are, is good news. That's what it means. You know, Newspapers in the Arab world are called Al-Hadith. It means news. Well, who is it news about? That's well, news about the Prophet. It's news about the prophet. So you could say the Gospels are just one big fat hadith because the, the Gospels are what? The good news about Jesus Christ. So the hadith are the good news about Muhammad. But they're put together and they didn't get into a story form the way the Gospels ultimately got into. Even though there's four versions, they got into a story form. Uh, and what happened was over the next century or two after the prophet's death, after the rise of the Umayyad Caliphate, and then the Abbasid Caliphate, the Hadith began to swell and swell and swell and swell and swell. And there were all sorts of what are called traditions about the prophet. So a good name for uh, Hadith is a tradition. Now originally these traditions could be about anyone connected to early Islam. Didn't have to focus on the Prophet. Could have focused on Omar. Could have focused on... There are uh, hadith about Ali and stuff like that. But as time went on and the legal specialists get, got hold of it, they began more and more demand that the hadith be about the Prophet. Western scholars have studied this material very carefully. And this is where Western scholars and Eastern scholars disagree with each other. Um, by the way, uh, what's happening to our friend 